Octane's lights look different from Cycle's lights. I don't know what it is exactly, but for me, it just looks a little bit more closer to real world. Yo guys, welcome back to another episode of why I use Blender Octane. In this video, I'm gonna talk about reasons why I like Octane over Cycles. My name is Patrick LeVar. I've been using Blender Octane for over about a year now and documenting my journey on learning it and teaching others how to use it. So if you're interested in using Blender Octane, you can do it because it's free. So enough of the jibber jabber, let's get straight into it. All right, guys, so we're gonna be breaking down this scene here. I did this little marker animation here a while back. A lot of people on the live stream were literally asking a lot of questions about how I did the Geo setup. Most people didn't realize that Geo worked with Blender Octane. They thought Octane was totally like in some different planet and it doesn't work with Geo. The only thing di really different about Octane and, and Cycles is the render engine. Pretty much most of the stuff I can still use except, you know, custom built add-ons that are using particular uh, cycles in particular, then we have issues. But every pretty much the standard version of Blender, things work here in Octane. If we get in it, here's the first shot we're gonna break down, um, which is kind of like maybe even probably the thumbnail. And a lot of people like the way this looked and how I got this out of the geo. So let's go straight to the geometry nodes because that's what a lot of people wanna know. So I'm gonna jump over to the geometry nodes setup and show you the setup here. Nothing super complex, I gotta give shout outs to uh, Ducky 3D because I watch a lot of his videos and this is where I learn a lot of my basic knowledge about the nodes here and the node whole geo node things. You know, many of the tutorials I can follow along al along with Ducky, but when we start pumping out attributes like color attributes and, and different things, attributes, that's when we might have an issue using Octane. It's a very simple setup. So we we started off with this grid. Once I had the grid, we're gonna distribute points onto the grid. Now again, these settings are all for my scene, guys. So I'm not gonna go in set step by step because if you're gonna recreate this, you're not gonna have the same settings. You're not gonna have the same numbers because your geometry is going to be different, but the nodes will pretty much be the same. So I have a grid, I'm distributing points onto that grid, plug that into the mesh. And then from there, I'm going to instance on points. What am I instancing? I'm gonna be instancing the marker that I made here. Here is my marker, which I basically modeled in a whole separate file. And then I just brought it over here to keep the scene and keep things a lot more easier. So once we have that, we're gonna use that for our instance, okay? That is the pretty much the base setup, or that's what I've got here in the background, all these little tiny markers here that are being instanced on this. So we go ahead and pull that off, look, and there, that's it. I have these other two markers that I've added in for a special shots, right? So I take that geometry, boom, instant it onto here. Small commercial break. If you're getting any value out of this video, guys, smash that like button for me. And as a gift or smashing that like button, you can jump over to my Gumroad. I've got all of this free stuff here for Blender Octane. Free Blender Octane startup file, which you just download this, helps you get started up. The, the settings and everything is all set up. You just pop the file in and you're ready to go. So then from there, what I wanted to do was to manipulate the scale of each one of these, okay? So what I do is I take an add node. We plug that add node. If I take that off, here it is. They're all like uniformed, right? And I didn't want that. So we take this add node, we drop it into the scale. And then from there, we're gonna take this other add node. Don't ask me why, but this is what I learned from Ducky. So just follow this setup. We take that other add node and we're gonna put that into the map range. So in the beginning, I literally started off with the map range into the scale like this, okay? And that's what I had. And then you play with these values to, you know, to get the minimum and the maximum. So if I add this noise texture to it here, which you see, I've got this noise texture, this allows me to add some noise in here. So this is the noise. If we pull the noise out, this is what everything looks like. It's just pretty much straight up, right? And then by adding in that note, that noise, we get to see the noise pattern and it's alter, it's altering this, the size of these here. Then we take this W and this W is going to allow me to move it. And this is how it went in a different video I started to anim animate. I have a live stream where I literally went and streamed the whole process of me animating each shot that you saw in that little opening sequence. So that was that. The next issue I had was going to be color. So once I join this geometry into here, I accept them to have a set material node, okay? Let me pull this out because this was where I kind of got stuck. By alt duplicating these, I'm able to get these random colors. And the way we can get these random colors, if we go back to our master marker here, and I'm gonna jump over the shader for a moment here so I can show you. Now I'm gonna break down this really quickly here to show you guys what the material is like on this. I have my base material here, which is a universal material. And then I got these composite textures and these allow me to layer materials or layer textures and do Photoshop-like things to them, like 
add, multiply, that type of thing, right? I've got this RGB here, up here, and this is basically just a, a fiber mat. It's like making these little tiny fibers on here. If we look, you'll see I've got these little tiny specks right here. They're so minute, you can barely even see them here. Just grime, little tiny fibers, right? I have those on here. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking those and I'm using them as a mask to mask out this slightly. If I crank this up to green, and we go ahead and let's see now we should be able to it's so faint guys like you really probably can't even pick them up in the scene here which i'm not even really seeing them that's just to show you. here it is these little tiny dots here right so i'm just using this color here is the color that i want this to be and i'm using this image as a mask and i'm plugging it into the opacity here i did the same thing here again with here's my label this is my label which is go again being pumped through and it's being a it's acting as a mask and then over here, I have all of these colors. All of these colors are representing the colors on top of the marker here, right here. And then again on the bottom, like here. And then I got some grime and roughness. But what I'm doing is I add in this random color node. And every time I alt duplicate, it's going to choose a random color. And it's gonna choose a random color from the ones I chose here. If I take this one marker and if I go alt duplicate, boom, now it duplicates again with the new color not rocket science pretty simple right then just the nodes look different so that was the base material right let's jump back over to the geo back over to the geo if i go ahead and unhide my plane which the geo was connected to that is how i'm randomly getting all of these colors here there was an issue where like the colors weren't being separated because i have two colors here we have the tips and we have the white it was only showing all of one color here. I don't know why it's not showing it now, but here, let me see if we can load. I'm trying to, to recreate the problem I have. Oh, here it is. Here's the problem again. All the markers here you see have the color all onto it. Like, it's like, well, how do I select? Okay, well, let me select the white. Well, it's either all white or it's going to be all tipped. You can't add in another set material node. So I was like, well, how do I separate this? How do I separate it? And by accident, I just clicked on it and I dragged and this popped open. I was like, huh, well, I know these still work inside of geo nodes. Like I can use these geos. So I'm like, okay, well, material index node. I was like, interesting. And I remember from a Ducky 3D video, I used this once before. I was like, okay, let me see if I take the material index because I do have multiple materials. I had grabbed this, popped this in here, and then I think I went back to white and then boom, like it worked. It, it was a literally an accident. It was like, I sat for 10 minutes trying to figure out how the heck to separate those. And it's literally a material index. That's how I was able to split those up using Geo inside of Blender Octane. Now, when you start getting into attributes, Again, there's certain attributes we cannot use. The only two I have right now is the colors at color vertex attribute and the grayscale attributes. Those are the only two that I'm able to do at the moment of this release. So if you're not doing a color vertex attribute or a grayscale, unfortunately, it doesn't connect with over with geo nodes yet. Okay, so it probably will in the future. One other reason why I also for octane over cycles is for me is the camera if you saw if you notice over here in my shader tab i have all these cameras here on the side here well i've built my own preset of cameras literally they're basically trying to recreate cine lenses okay and i have a bunch of different set uh, attributes on these like lens distortion things like that they get quite complicated and octane's camera system is way more advanced than cycles so if i was a, i'm not going to break get into it at the moment because it can be a whole nother video but if i quickly just show you here's all of my options here for my camera let's zoom in on this so we can get in tight you see here i've got all of these stuff all of this is just in for my camera settings and tweaking my camera attributes aspect ratio shape edge blade count rotation roundness central obstruction no notches notch scales and then i go into here and i've got even more We've got down here to optical, optical vignetting, split focus diopters. Like this is all real world stuff. Like you could do, you know, it gets intense with the camera settings. So that is one reason why I prefer to use Octane because the camera, I can tweak them. So I tweaked all my cameras to look just a little bit more close to cinematic or, or more of a like close to a, a real li world lens. Here is like one of my shots that I really like in the bokeh on that just looks absolutely fantastic. Here was another shot that we had, we were just getting the side profile of these guys here. Another shot here I also had, uh, I gotta adjust the lighting, it's a little bit too bright on that marker there, but that was kind of 
showing off the marker. Then we had this other one here, which is again, just focusing on the whole plane and this camera moves. It's, you know, you're sliding, you're flying across the scene there. There's just something, the way the specular and the roll off looks like, I just like the way Octane does its lights. Octane's lights look different from Cycle's lights. I don't know what it is exactly, but for me, it just looks a little bit more closer to real world. That's what it is. And I prefer Octane. Take a look at this. This is the first video in the Blender Octane guide. Hope you guys enjoy. Patrick LeVar, keep rendering. Catch you in the next one. Peace.